Hello and welcome back to the second video of the R tutorial series for beginners. In this video I will give you a quick tour of R Studio, show you some tips and tricks and also show you how to run your first command in R. If you have not installed R Studio or R yet, please go to the first video in order to do that. The first thing you want to do in R Studio is to change your background. So that means you want to change the appearance of our studio. Uh, at the moment you have like a white background but of course if you for example program with R in a public space like a library you want to look presentable and that means you want to have a black background so everyone who walks by you thinks you're very smart. So you go to tools then to global options and then you go to appearance right here and here you can change your theme and you can see here you can change your editor theme you can change your editor font size and uh, yeah here you can click for a pre preview on all those different themes me personally I like the cobalt version best so I will select this and click apply and you see the background has changed of course the real reason to change your background is uh, so it's easier on your eyes so the eyes don't ache if you program then uh, it's likely that you will stare at the screen for quite a length of time and uh, a black background makes that for your eyes easier. So now that we have changed the theme we can talk about the things that are going on here. So first I will talk about this big window or plane on the left hand side here which is called the console. The console is used to execute commands in R. So the first thing you usually do in a programming tutorial or when you learn a new language is you learn how to return the command hello world. So you want that the program here returns the message hello world. And to do this in R you just type in print, then in brackets you do in parentheses hello world, and then you click enter and then you see it returns hello world. And what you may also do is use the console like a calculator. So for example you can type in 3 plus 5, enter, and it will turn the value 8. And you can even do this with more sophisticated mathematical functions. So like sine of 0, it returns a 0. Or cosine of 0, which is of course 1. So you can see, uh, you can even use this console like a mathematical calculator. So the next thing we want to do is to create a variable. So then we can also talk at the same time about this window on the top right here which is called environment because in this environment all the variables you create are stored. So at the moment you see the environment is empty but now we can create a variable like this. So first you type the name of the variable for example x then it equals and then yeah we want to have this variable contain the value 3. Click enter and you see now we have here in this environment the name x and the value 3. You can also do the same thing with doing an arrow. So you have here an arrow and the arrow is pointed to the variable name. I would recommend you using the second version because then it makes it more clear which is the variable name and which is the value. You can even do it the other way around. You can first type 3 and then make the arrow in the other direction and then type x. This is all the same. Now we can also create for example a variable y and give it the value 5. You will see here in the environment now we have y and the value 5 created and now we can do for example x plus y and this will return 8. And then we can even create a new variable called z and do x plus y here and then a new variable called z with the value 8 is created because of course x plus y is 3 plus 5 which is 8. And now if you type in z here and click enter then it also returns the value 8. And you will see for example for the letter a we have not yet assigned any value. So if you click enter now it will say arrow object a not found. So this was a quick intro to the console and now we will talk shortly about the other two windows here. So the environment I've already explained. Then you can also click here on the tab history which shows the history of all the commands I've just done. So for example we can click on these and then return them to console 
and then you will see it appears here in the console at the bottom and then return the same thing again. Then the last tab here is the connections tab which probably does not interest you for quite a while. Here you can connect to data sources for example but don't worry about that for the moment. Here on the bottom we have also several tabs, for example here the packages tab which is already open. What a package is and what it's good for I will explain in a later video. For now here are all the packages that are already installed on your computer. Then we have the plots window, so here we can do a plot. I can show you here, you type in the console for example plot and then x comma y and then it will return the value 3 or the dot 3 5 because x was 3, y was 5, and then you have like this right here. You can also of course do functions if you learn functions. I will also explain this in a later video. So the files pane I will explain in just a moment. First I want to talk about the help pane which is very very useful. So as you can see I've already uh, used some predefined functions of R like print or plot and or sign and now sometimes when you use those predefined functions you might wonder how to use them correctly. So if you need help with this, you can type just here in the console a question mark and then the function, for example, print. And then click enter. And then this help pane will open and it will give you a documentation about this function. So we'll have a description, how to use it, uh, what arguments you have to put in, and then also the default values, some details, some references, and, an exa and some examples. This is like... Um, a standard documentation of a function and you can use and read up on your function and how to use it correctly with this help pane. Alternatively you can also do this with help and then in brackets the function and then it will return this as well. The viewer pane, the one that's left, is not so important for beginners. This will only become important if you want to program for example apps with R. But for now the most important thing that's left is I want to show you how to create an R script. For this you go on the, on the top left corner, then click R script, and this will open this up. And an R script is basically a file where you can store your code. So I can also type here, for example, the things I did before, x and then 3. Yeah, so we have the variable with the name x and give it the value 3. And now if I do uh, control and enter, it returns this to the console here at the bottom. I can also just click run here and this will turn the line where the cursor is at the moment. Or I can highlight what I want to return and then click run. This is all the same. Here I can also of course do the hello world command. So print hello world, control and enter and this will return here in the console hello world. So obviously this is very important for reproducibility. So of course you want to store this file and to do this you either click here on save or just control and S and then yeah I can store this and give the file a name for example I will say first script and then click save. And now I can also show you the files pane when you click here uh, you have a certain photo of your computer uh, like your Windows Explorer for example opened up. I chose the desktop and here at the bottom I just uh, saved it to the desktop so I can see here the the file. So if I close this up here yeah, then I can also reopen this by clicking it here and it will open up again. Uh, you might want to change your default folder you have at the start. You can do this with tools global options and then here in general you can here choose the default working directory. Yeah, this uh, sums up this video uh, about a quick tour of RStudio and uh, your first commands with R. I hope you enjoyed it and take care. If you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future. If you would like to support this channel financially, there's a donation link in the description.